We're going to explain life in seven minutes using examples from the Hunger Games, Fortnite, the Tour de France, and Zelda. We gave this presentation at Princeton University, and now you guys are gonna get an expanded version. And I do think it's very important for everybody to understand this framework because it will build empathy in an increasingly unempathetic world. Hey, hopefully this is helpful for you and hopefully it's easy to understand and easy to follow. So if you're excited, please hit that like button and let's get into it. Step one, Hunger Games. We are all born into different districts. There are rich districts, poor districts, middle-class districts, districts with different cultures and different looks that correspond with those cultures. And not only that, Andrew, we're born into a micro family within that tribe. And those families help determine your initial culture, your initial value systems, and your initial coaching. Yeah, your environment beyond your family, which is like maybe extended family, school, environment, whatever, that's larger than that, provides the stimulus and opportunity. Stimulus are things that happen to you that you need to respond to, and opportunities could be good opportunities or bad opportunities. And by the way, nowadays, your environment also includes the internet, depending on how much time you spend online, that can also influence you. And by the way, if you're thinking about this in the terms of age, I would say you're about 16 years old. You've had some choices in life, but really your family and your immediate environment has determined most of your life to this point. Yeah, I would say most kids are pretty malleable up to 16 years old, Andrew, but we all know people that literally like just didn't listen to their parents. All right, moving on to step number two, the human cannonball parachute drop onto a mountain. So basically your tribal family is responsible for loading you into a cannonball, Andrew, aiming you somewhere around a gigantic mountain, picking a side, maybe it's the snowy side, maybe it's the sunny side, maybe it's the rocky side, maybe it's the grassy side, and they are in charge of a mission to shoot you out of that cannonball onto some starting point on that mountain. Now, let me tell you this. You do have some self-agency and some control when you're in a parachute, but ultimately the largest factors are where the plane dropped you and what the wind is like. But yes, people can kind of control it a little bit. So you get shot out of this cannonball, but here's the thing. If you have a particularly like problematic environment that you come from, that cannonball launch could get completely botched. No, maybe you were loaded up and then there's that fire and then you you went two feet. Or maybe you got shot 50,000 feet. Who knows? I don't know. It just kind of depends on your family and the district that you're from. Yeah, and basically there's all these different paths that you get shot onto and you may or may not like that general direction that your tribe was like, yeah, I feel like that's a good place for you. And that brings us to step number three. This is where you land onto the mountain and then all of a sudden life turns into the Tour de France. It's a bike race. Right, uh, people that land on a very specific like altitude on the mountain, like in a very specific area, they probably have some commonalities. Not all the time, but they probably do. And at that point, they're probably gonna need to build like teams to ride up the, you know, the mountain, you know what I mean? Because everybody's chasing goals. However, not everybody's gonna have the same access to bicycle equipment because this is really where, um, you know, if you came from a rich family or poor family, you know, you're gonna see some differences in the bike technology. Yeah, and this, uh, in the real life world, I would say this is kind of like going to college, choosing a college. If you have the choice to go to a college, you choose your college and then you choose your major and you're choosing a friend group in college. And yes, it is true. A lot of the people that you spend time in college, they are gonna have a big impact on your life moving forward. So basically you can't really choose your starting point but you can choose the path moving forward. I would say a lot of people do happen to just choose the path that they're shot on to because they're already like, well, I got a shot on here for a reason. But other people, they just pew, and they just want to deviate very, very far from where they got shot on. Now, let's say you choose a harder path because you want to go, you know, the path less traveled, of course, like do something else that you're, is different than your family. Now you got a trailblaze. Right. You got to grab the machete and simultaneously <laughs> ride up the with a bicycle, whether you have a good or bad bicycle, and start just chopping reeds and weeds and rocks and things like that. So, Andrew, for people who do want to heavily deviate into like a forested, difficult path, I hope you're ready for quite the journey and you got a lot of willpower. All right. Going on to step number four, then it becomes a question of side quests or the main mission. This is the Zelda analogy. 
Yeah, Zelda is really interesting because you do need to do some side missions to get like shields and experience points to like get some power ups before you defeat Ganon, which is like the main bad guy trying to destroy the world. But you can kind of just get caught up doing side mission after side mission. Like in life and in the world, there are an unlimited amount of side quests that you could pursue rather than go try to kill Ganon. Or like, and I'm, by the way, Ganon is whatever your major goal is that's about, you know, like your larger mission. Right, and I would say also your fam things like your family situation are going to determine how urgent that main mission is. Let's say you come from a family where you have to support them at the age of 18. So you're gonna have to be on a mission to make more money or no, support your you're, family you're, earlier you're on. You're only gonna do as many side quests, pretty much, Andrew, as you have to. Yeah. You're gonna identify the side quests. You'll be like, all right, I can get this much experience points and I don't even care if this side quest is fun or not because I just gotta get on my mission to go attack Ganon. But we all know people who are still on side quest after many, many years and they haven't figured it out. Maybe they're on a mission to just be like, hey guys, I'm just trying these quests to build up experience and uh, these, squil these skills and maybe I'll figure something out. But they don't really know where they're going and they've lost sight of yeah, the main I guess, mission. I guess this would be like somebody who's like teaching Japan, English in Japan for like eight years or something like that where you're like, man, you going on a lot of side quests. It looks like you're having fun. But you ain't attacking anybody in the, in, in the larger scheme of Zelda's storyline. Okay, now step number five. This is where you kind of might take a minute and look on the inside and ask yourself, am I happy on this path? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Right, and now this was based off all the metaphors and analogies inside Inside Out, which is a Disney movie that's really famous for trying to illustrate, are you happy doing something? Are you printing blue balls? Are you printing, you know, purple, red, orange? Um, what is the meaning of life? Look, look at this success breakdown right here, Andrew. Success is an iceberg. This is what people see on the top. Underneath, Andrew, there's persistence, failure, sacrifice, disappointment, good habits, hard work, dedication. Probably teamwork makes the dream work, working with other people. Now, Andrew, for some people, doing all that stuff that's the lower half of the iceberg, that doesn't make them happy. So you haven't reached the top of the mountain yet, but you're at that point where you've made some progress and you start wondering, guys, is, 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 is this, do I want to continue this mission? Do I want to continue up this bike path and who's around me? Yeah, and here's the thing. If you have a different levels of resources, you might be able to get like airlifted from a side of the mountain that you dedicated a lot of time to, but is ultimately not working out to a more smoother path. However, if you don't have those resources, you're gonna have to descend down the mountain, reroute and restart. Ooh, tough. All right, guys, moving on to our last step. Step number six, do you repeat the cycle or not? Yeah, are you very different from your parents? Are you very similar? Because guess what? Now you're going to become a parent. You are gonna become a mini tribal leader that is raising your child until a certain age and then shooting them out of a human cannonball onto the mountain. So now you kind of ask yourself, well, what do I want to do for the next generation? Am I shooting them with out of the same type of cannon, with the same equipment, with the same type of bike, or do I want to get them an electric bicycle, an off-road bike, a gas-powered bike, how, so they can zoom up the path? How instrumental are you in shaping the vision of your child? Um, there is a saying, Andrew, that has stood the test of time, that apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Now, re the reason that they invented that is because statistically, 75% of people will end up living very similar to how they were born, both in location and socioeconomic status. That means 25% of people, Andrew, will vary greatly from that, and 75% of people will essentially like become some continuation of the lineage of their parents. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap up our analogy to understand life. Hopefully, you found it easy to follow and you found it helpful. Now, I think there are a ton of details that we left out because we wanted to keep it short, just like a presentation for you guys. I think there's a lot of details that obviously we could have included, you know, what side quests are more beneficial than others. Is there uh, any chance that people are trying to sabotage you on your Tour de France road up the mountain? Uh, how much can you accept your parents, you know, that shot you out of the cannonball going against you? Can you steal other people's equipment? Right. How or should you? <laughs> how ruthless are you on that mountain trek up, you know, to the yeah. summit or the peak? Um, however, ultimately, I think that this is a really important and accurate framework that sort of transcends gender, race, religion, because we are all born into this life 
and we are all shot onto this mountain, but we all react differently. All right, everybody. So please let us know what you think about the analogy in the comments down below, because maybe we missed some things and maybe you have things to add to the analogy. Who knows? But I just hope that this sticks with you somehow, because this really does help explain why people are different and how to build empathy for each other. Yeah. And the reason that we always give this at colleges is because we basically want kids to get a better framework as they like move on to every step of their life and hopefully, you know, be more reflective, make better decisions. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button. Please share this video if you found it interesting. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.